let's talk in this video about how we're going to set up the ventilation, the manual ventilation for our summertime or cooling scenario. So how are we going to enter that information for the PHPP? How does the PHPP take account of things like operable windows? Let's take a look at that in this video. And before we go to our grasshopper scene, let's take a look at how the PHPP expects us to input information about operable windows. So I'm here in the PHPP, and as we were looking at in the last video, we've got pretty good heating energy demand performance. We're within striking distance of certification level. Um, for a small building like this, I would typically choose to pursue something like low energy building certification level, which is in fact 30 kilowatt hours per square meter per year as a target. Uh, and so in, if that was the case, if that was our certification goal, then we would already be complying here in our heating energy demand. But notice here that the cooling and dehumidification demand is very high. We're up at 35 right now. And we have a target of 18 kilowatt hours per square meter per year. So we're uh, really, really high. We need to figure out what it is that's driving that cooling and dehumidification demand um, uh, so much. So let's first of all take a look at our summer ventilation worksheet. So down at the bottom here, scroll over till we see the summer ventilation worksheet. And the summer ventilation worksheet is going to be the worksheet dedicated to manual window operation or summer ventilation in general. And notice that we have some inputs here for a couple of different things. So first of all, we have our typical ERV or HRV flow rate. So we're going to operate the ERV in the summertime. And what is the flow rate that we're going to operate the HRV or ERV at? Well, right now, we're going to set it to the same flow rate as the wintertime. Go back for a second here to our additional ventilation worksheet. Remember, we input a whole bunch of information here about our flow rates and about the schedule that our uh, ventilation system operates on. All of that results in a total air annual air change rate, 0.56. And currently in the summertime, notice 0.56, we're using the same information. However, if I hover over this cell for a second, notice that we get a little warning here from PHI and they say, for hygienic reasons, the total summer air change, including window ventilation, should be approximately 50% higher than your winter air change rate. So if my winter air change rate is 0.56, then my total summertime air change rate should be 50% higher than that. So around 0.8 or so. Well, 0.56 is gonna come from the HRV. So that's gonna be there in the background for sure. And then down here, we have the ability to input that additional ventilation. So if I want to get that extra 50%, if I want more airflow in the, in the summertime through opening windows or whatever, notice I have the ability here to put in a window ventilation air change rate or an air change rate via some sort of um, dedicated extract system. Either of those can get input here. So that's great. So we can input some window ventilation information. I should also note this is your, um, let's call this the daytime window ventilation. We have an additional input down here on the bottom for nighttime or extra window ventilation. So we have a, yet an additional input here for our nighttime uh, window ventilation. And then we uh, have even additional uh, fan controlled ventilation uh, below that. Okay, so currently, and notice of course, currently these are zeroed out. So we currently have no additional ventilation from our window systems, uh, from our, our operable windows. As a result, we have a frequency of overheating of about 43% of the summer period, a maximum humidity of 18 um, grams per kilogram, and a frequency of overhumidity of uh, almost 19%. So not very good. But of course, we could do a lot better by just opening the windows. So let's do that. How are we going to open the windows here? How are we going to set these to um, some new values? So, we'll, so now let's go back to our grasshopper scene. So in our grasshopper scene, and I'm going to do it right in this natural airflow section. So let's add a new component to this natural airflow section. I'm going to come up here to my PassPass Tools ribbon, come into O1 model, 
And I'm going to come down here to this summer ventilation component. So last time we used this air tightness component. Now I want to use this summer ventilation component. And I'm going to drop this summer ventilation component onto the canvas here. And notice this one's quite straightforward. It's going to take honeybee rooms. It's going to kick out honeybee rooms. And we're going to apply some of that additional information. So my honeybee rooms come in and my honeybee rooms go out. And what do we have? We have a couple of different pieces of information. So first of all, basic ACH and nighttime ACH. So I have the ability here to set this value or this value, my nighttime ACH or my daytime ACH. Okay, well, let's try that. Go back to our grasshopper scene. Let's say that our basic ACH for the day gets set to 0 0.85 or 84 ACH. This is air changes per hour. Where did I get it? 0.84 from? Uh, just, I just, I'm just get, I'm just making something up, just to demonstrate. And let's say wind, nighttime because your windows are not as open at night. Say 0.3 ACH at night because you know for security reasons you don't leave your windows open all night long or or whatever. So okay, so we've got some ACHs being input here. So I take my honeybee rooms, I pass my honeybee rooms on to the next link in the chain. All of that information flows through into our PHPP Excel document. And as soon as that's been updated and it's completed writing, we can go back and take a look at our PHPP. So our PHPP should now be updated. Oops, that didn't work. Oops. Okay. Uh, there we go. Uh, we are working now. A uh, little typo there. Uh, okay. So here we go. We're getting our window ventilation air change rate, 1.68, and our nighttime ventilation rate of 0.6. What? Wait a second. That's not. That's not right. We didn't put. We didn't input 1.6 or 0.6. We input 0.84 and 0.3. What's happening here? Well, if you notice, if you um, take a look at the tool tip here, um, it says that the value the, is an air change rate during the daytime. Note that this value gets applied to each honeybee room that you pass in. In the PHPP, the summer ventilation worksheet will be the total of all of the honeybee room ACHs. The reason it does that is, you know, sometimes you might want different airflow for different rooms. So for instance, let's do it this way just to show. For instance, I, I might want to break apart my honeybee rooms at some point, right? I've got two different rooms. Um, and I might want to apply a certain air change rate to the second floor and a different air change rate to the first floor, right? Maybe the second floor, I leave the windows open all night long because first, I don't worry about it so much for security or something, right? Um, so let's say, so let's do it that way. Let's say for the second floor, I'm going to assign just the second floor to this guy, and then I'll break out my first floor, and I'll do that as a a separate one, and then I'll merge everything back together. Right? So I can absolutely uh, work it that way. So let's do this. I'll make a copy of this. Put this down here. Right. So this is my second floor. So there's my second floor, and then this will be my first floor. And then to put them back together, obviously, we would just go ahead and merge those uh, zones back together and then pass that along to the next link in the chain there, right? So I can break my, my two zones apart, apply different parameters to the different zones. So let's take a, let's do that. Let's apply a certain, certain air change rate to this one. So let's say maybe, maybe here I've got 1.2. ACH applied to my upper zone, and then maybe I want to apply like, um, I don't know, a much lower, let's say down on the first floor, I don't really open much, I don't open my windows much at all, and then at night on the second floor, I might kick them up to like 0.8 
ACH or something like that, right? So we can we can sort of um, we can make whatever story we want here about how the occupants are actually going to use the 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 building here. Let me delete these. Um, uh, but it allows us to break apart the zones, assign individual elements to the zones. Those, those get added back together. And then in the PHPP, those get summed up for the total building air change rate. So 0.9 gets entered here, 0 0.9, 0 0.8 plus 0 0.1 gives us 0.9. So we can absolutely work with this tool in this manner. So that would be fine. Um, I should know where do these numbers come from? Uh, the easiest, there's lots of different places those numbers might come from. Probably the easiest place to calculate those numbers is over here on the right hand side. Uh, the PHPP has these, um, these handy little calculators for calculating the resultant air change rate from some operable window um, uh, units. And so um, you could definitely use these uh, to calculate the ACH. This doesn't, when you use this calculator, the ACH doesn't go anywhere. This is just like a secondary calculator. So you would just have to like copy this information and paste it into the grasshopper scene. You could just use this as a little calculator. I suppose we should build one of these on the grasshopper side so that so that we could have this in grasshopper. Maybe we'll do that. That'll be that'll be fine. Um, so maybe by the time you're using this, maybe that tool has we've built that into grasshopper. But for now, you could just use that in PHPP and then copy and paste that information here into one of these guys. So that would be one way that you could absolutely work with this. Now there's another way that you could work with this tool. So let me come up to O1 model and grab another summer ventilation. And I'll take both honeybee models. So at this point I'm taking two, or excuse me, honeybee rooms. So two honeybee rooms. And rather than setting the information here explicitly, instead I'm just going to say, use the default values. I'm gonna set this to true. So we set that to true, use the default values, and now if we, so we get rid of all of this, and we just pass this along to the next link in the chain there. Let's go ahead and delete all of this. So now we're using the default values. Notice I'm not giving any information to the ACH or the nighttime ACH, so I'm not actually inputting any information there. If I go back to my grasshopper scene, take a look here. Notice that these values have been auto set 0 0.28, 0 0.28. Where did 0.28 come from? 0.28 is 50% of 0.56. So remember the goal here is to get 50% higher than 0.56. So this 0.28 represents the sort of minimum operable ventilation that you should have in your building. So the 0.28 represents that minimum. And so the, the by default, so maybe we should maybe we should rename this from default to use use minimum. Um, you know, this is gonna set you to the sort of least amount of operable ventilation error that still allows you uh, to meet the hygiene requirements of passive house certification. Uh, but you might want to add additional HCH for the purpose of cooling. So in order to improve your cooling situation, maybe you might bump that up even higher on, on the night or something like that. But this would be a this would be a very conservative estimate of your uh, cooling ability through your um, through your operable window ventilation. And at 0.28 ACH in the daytime, and at 0.28 ACH at night. How does that affect our cooling? Notice up here, our cooling has dropped to 27 kilowatt hours per square meter per year. We used to be at, what were we at, 30 something? Um, so we've dropped down to 27. We could probably do even better than that. So for instance, if we come in here and let's say that we really do, let's say we go up to one ACH at night because we leave all of our windows wide open. How is that gonna affect our project? So uh, once that uh, flows through, take a look at our PHPP. Notice here our cooling is now down to 19.8. So bumping up that nighttime ventilation to a much higher ventilation rate. Notice it's at two. Remember that one ACH gets applied to both honeybee rooms. So we have two ACH at night, which is pretty high, but that helps us cool the building significantly. So if we really were able to get that much airflow at night, if that was realistic based on our site and security and uh, the way the users use the building and the amount of operable windows that we've built into the building, then that can hugely help our cooling energy demand and overheating risk uh, issues for the building.
Right, so that can be really impactful. So you can play with this and configure this to your heart's content. Go back to the Rhino scene here. You can obviously set up you know, whatever values, whatever type of um, configuration you want here. I'm going to sort of leave it. I'm going to leave it just using the default values and um, for daytime and then one ACH per room at night. And I've now um, set up my natural airflow for the building. We've set up the air leakage and we've set up our summer ventilation. Right, so that's pretty good, right? So now we're in pretty good shape. I'll come back to my verification worksheet. So we're at 16, we gotta get to 15. We're at 20, we gotta get to 18. I'm at 89, we gotta get to 60. Okay, so what else can we do to this project to improve performance? Well, the other thing that we might do, so, um, so we're still over on heating, we're over on cooling, we're over on primary energy. Uh, let's go back and take a look at our annual heating energy demand worksheet. Go back to our annual heating energy demand worksheet. And let me zoom out a little bit. All right. What's the other? So, okay, so we fixed our ventilation. We take a look at windows. The windows are seemingly not doing too well. What's the other thing that really jumps out at me about this is look at how high our solar gains are on the heating side. I wonder if they're the same on the cooling side. Let's take a look at our cooling side. Let's take a look at annual cooling energy demand. Zoom out a little bit. Scroll down. See our little graph. Yeah, there's our operable ventilation. So 40, 54, that's pretty high. That's still pretty high. Hmm. So our, our, solar, our solar gain appears to be pretty high to me. That's the other thing that kind of jumps out at me from, from this. So let's take a look at our solar gain for a second here. So here's our total um, solar gain, our total heat gain from solar. And what do we have? We've got our reduction factors. We've got 0.37 G values. That's pretty good. That's about right. Um, got our areas look pretty good. Global radiation looks pretty good. So it's going to be all about the reduction factor here. And so let's take a look at our shading worksheet. Let's take a look at our shading worksheet. Hmm, we haven't entered any information about shading, have we? Notice here, we are still using the default 75% reduction factor for shading here in our PHPP. So we have not touched shading at all in this PHPP, have we? We haven't entered any information about the shading situation of this project, which is obviously gonna strongly affect both the heating and the cooling energy demand and the peak loads. So before we go any further looking at optimization and what's going wrong, I think we need to address our shading situation. So when we come back in the next series of videos, I think we will turn our attention to the shading configuration and let's talk about how we're going to input the shading information for our various windows in the project. Let's, let's more tightly dial in the shading information here before we take any more steps to try and improve performance on things like the envelope or, or anything else. So when we come back in the next series, we will finally turn our attention to the shading and solar gain of the windows in our little building here.